Getting logged on today was kind of like Gurf and the Snurfle Lurk. Shut the door, I'm not eating the whole damn neighborhood. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Old Man Gamer Network. I am Combat Carl, and we are going to do part two of our Alliance series. Uh, in part one, we covered finding and joining an existing alliance. And today we're going to talk about creating and managing an alliance of your own. And why would you do such an insane thing? Well, it's all got to do with control. Uh, you are the one who sets the criteria for admission. You can set the feel for your alliance. If you want to be farmers, you can be farmers. If you want to be stone-cold server killers, you can be stone-cold server killers. Or, you know, you could be something in between. Why else would you want to do this? Well, as a lone wolf, we are not able to participate in certain events we uh, miss out on alliance-based rewards for things like the world boss or undead invasion. There's uh, a Garuda, a part of the Garuda challenge that you can only do if you're in an alliance, things like that. And then there's all the other alliance benefits that, that we had talked about over in part one. So before creation, there's a couple of things that you're going to want to do just to just to make things go easier. Um, one of the first things that you're going to want to do, you're going to want to see if uh, your name's available. Uh, because there are a number of alliance names where if you kind of go hopping from server to server and, and look at the alliance, you know, the top ten, uh, alliance listings, you're going to see that there's a there's a number of names that uh, are that that keep popping up, and you know you you want to be proud of who you are. You want to have some sort of individuality uh, going on. You don't just want to be another you know cookie cutter uh, kind of uh, organization. So one of the things that you can do is see if your abbreviation is still available. Um, we have a particular uh, abbreviation that we want to see if it is available. So you type the initial, the three letter initials in and hit the search button. No results. So that means that we are able to take this and uh, so we're going to get back out of there. So you know you have to do you have to do that whatever whatever your initials are going to be because if you have this great idea and you know you type in ABC and ABC is taken, well then you kind of have to figure out an alternative. If you do that stuff right up you know right from the get go, then you save yourself a little a little bit of hassle. So we know that uh, our alliance abbreviation is available I am unable to type and we hit create yes we're gonna spend our 200 gems we have created an alliance now you can see here Farging new guys, and you are the creator, so you're automatically the R5. This is our power. This is how many people we have. This is the language that we have selected. This is that very brief um, description that we just put in there. This is the default crest that comes up. And so you can see these are all of these options that are now available to us that have not been available to us. And Alliance Science is, let's click it, and we, so we now are able to donate to an Alliance Science, and the first thing we would be able to do, at least the first one that's up, 
is alliance capacity and that's going to give us 10 extra members that would take us from 50 to 60 then we can increase construction speed training speed there's all kinds of stuff depending on the style of what you're wanting to do then you can prioritize them we will we'll show you that later um, what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to manage alliance settings we don't want to change the name because we just made the name. We don't want to change the abbreviation because we just did the abbreviation. Alliance flag. Here's the thing. If you want to change the flag to something else, they're going to charge you friggin' money to change your flag to something that's not like everybody else's. Ooh, I like that one. That's pretty. Merca. Um... If you want to spend, if you want to spend the diamonds to do so, you're more than welcome. Then there are ones where they have a prerequisite, like this one: Constantinople Alliance ranking enters the elite range. That means if we are participating in the Battle of Constantinople, um, otherwise known as BOC, um, if you rank into the elite range then you are able to change your alliance flag to something else. And they've got all kinds. they got Wiggly Wings, Wiggly Woo, apparently the Eye of Sauron. Um, so there, there are different things that, that you can change there. If you want to change the introduction, uh, this is this can be read on the alliance page when people look at your alliance. If you have a non-aggression pact, or if you are have made an alliance with another alliance, this is a good place to put that. Um, because if you're in, I don't know, if you're in the Hatfields, and you want to join this alliance, and you see that they're aligned with the McCoys, well, if you're not familiar with American folklore, Hatfields and McCoys are notorious for for feuding for no other reason than because that's the way it's always been done so that is a good place to put something there if you um uh if you need a condition uh if you want someone to um uh change monarch still can't type Name to advance past R1. That's my condition. If you want to become R2 or higher, got to get rid of the monarch name. In fact, I'll be honest with you, I think we've covered this in other things. If you don't change your name, monarch, blah, 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 um, I won't even talk to you because, you know, be a person don't be a number uh, let's save that okay that's been saved uh, edit alliance rank names you can give them different names so um, so you know if you want to call yourself the old man seems you only have 10 characters so you could do that you know, you can assign these as to, to whatever you want to. Um, down here, this is probably the important one that you, you kind of want to see, is open versus closed recruitment. Open recruitment means that when they look at your alliance, the little green button will say join and that means if they click that button they're automatically in if it says apply then uh, it's you click the button and there's a notification sent to uh, upper management for lack of a better term that there is someone that wants to join and then the process goes from there however however the alliance has determined it so here is a consideration. Uh, we are in the buildup to um, 
another server war this weekend. So most alliances that I know, they close their recruitment and they do not accept new members from the time their alliance uh, opponent is announced because of spies. We know they're here, but we don't, you don't have to make it easy for them. So, um, and if we were doing this and it was not server war week, then we would have open recruitment. Um, but since we are in server wars, we're going to close recruitment. And that means that, again, somebody has to hit the apply button and I have to let them in. If I don't know who they are, they're not getting in until after the server war is over. Um, you can also change the language. These are the supported languages that Ebony currently uses. And um, so if you, you know, I have known, I have known alliances that have changed languages because they had a, a huge influx of one nationality. And, you know, if you're the gaining you know, if you're the winners in that, that's great. If you're the losers in it, it's not so much fun. We do, and I'm sure you already know this, we do have translation software that translates what is typed into the chat bars. And it gets translated not just there, but also in the mail that gets sent out. And it works okay a lot of the time. Sometimes it doesn't work so well. So, if you're in a, if you're in an organization and and there are members of many different languages, be patient. Sometimes the the, the translation does not go so well, and it may take two or three turns to to figure out what someone is talking about. They may come across as really bossy. And it's, and it's not that they're bossy. It's just that the, the way, not all languages are built the same. Not the, the way that you would construct a sentence in English. It's probably not the way that you would construct a, a sentence in, you know, in Russian or Chinese or, or Esperanto. So, you know, take, take all of that stuff into consideration. It's, it's just something that you, you need to be aware of. Um, you can hit the details button and what this is going to do is this is going to tell you about what each rank can do. If you're an R1, you can leave the alliance. That's about the only really meaningful thing that you can do. Down here, you can shop in the alliance shop. You can donate to Alliance Science. You can ask for and give Alliance help. You can view the members. And you can also participate in an alliance election. Um, you can't mail everybody. Uh, and these are all, this, this isn't an option list. This is telling you what, what can happen. Because um, I can't, you know, if I click on these, on and off of these, I can't change these. This is just telling you what, what people can do. It can tell you who can build a city. Who can demolish a city? Um, those types of things. Recommend alliance sciences. That is, um, you can decide what which one to put a give a thumbs up to. Um, we'll show you that here. Recommend alliance science. I'm not particularly worried about my capacity right now. What with it being closed recruiting. And uh, we're not exactly selling ourselves right now. So, uh, so would construction speed be the one that we would look at? I don't know. Training speed? Eh. Resources? Maybe. We'll have to see. That, again, that depends on your style of gameplay. If you are constantly rallying, march speed might be the one that you want. If you are um, if you are trying to get your research up, you can start driving these home uh, to get your research speed to speed up. If you are a gatherer, that's something. Uh, if you're worried about 
are concentrating on trying to get your resources. Ooh, the zipper. Then uh, this that's certainly one that you might want to think about. So now we can go back. Um, we can go to the Alliance Journal, and this is going to tell you what's going on. I created Farging New Guys. I changed the Alliance description. Uh, this will tell you when, uh, I think more importantly, this will tell you when someone gets booted. If you have multiple people doing multiple things, it will tell you when they do them. It will tell you when they invite people for the Battlefield series. It will tell you uh, if someone gets expelled or kicked out. It will tell you who did that, and it will tell you when that happened. Uh, honor rank. Hey, look at it. I'm number one, baby. Uh, this is your honor. This has got to do with... Um, activities that will award you alliance honor points and this will tell you who's who's being very active and who's not being active there is also a donation honor rank and that has got to do with alliance sciences if you make it a requirement to donate x amount a week you can keep track of that and see who is um, who's pulling their weight uh, again, you can't join an organization like this for very long and just be a taker. You got to give them. And then, if worse comes to worse, you can you can call it quits. Uh, if for some reason it gets it gets really difficult, or uh, you know, sometimes personal life takes over. Sometimes you just get a bunch of jerks, and um, it's just it's easier to just call it quits sometimes. So now we're back here at our main, uh, our, our main alliance area. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our alliance science, and I think we're going to go down to, uh, where is the go fast button? March speed. So here's what you can do. This is going to tell you every time you click this donate button, you're going to give them 5,000 food. It's going to go towards being able to upgrade things in the Alliance to help upgrade the hive, to help uh, upgrade the warehouse, the Alliance resource. That's one of the ways that you get things done. And every time you click that button, it's going to add 20 minutes to this timer. Now, the limit is four hours, and if I continue, every time I click that, it adds another 20 minutes, I can click this 12 times. Noted. 10, 11, 12. Don't donate 13 times, because if you hit that button a 13th time, it's going to lock you out. It's going to freeze you. Your numbers are going to go red and then it's going to count down. If you just continue, um, what I do is I'll check it multiple times through the day and I can continue to donate throughout the day. If you really need to donate more, um, you can go over the limit and then you can use gems to clear that off of there. It's something crazy. It's like three or 400 gems to clear it off. But that's something that you can do. So we'll go back and we will boost this up. If we think that's important, we'll go back into Manage. We'll go back into Settings. We'll go down to Alliance Science. And then what we will do is we will find March Speed and we will recommend. And what that's going to do is going to put that at the top of the list with a happy thumb. So that way, everybody in the Alliance, when they go to donate to Alliance Science, they now see, apparently this is so important that I went through and mouse clicked through and put this up at the top of the list. So if your Alliance has the happy thumbs on there, then that's something that you should do because someone, an R4 or an R5, 
has decided that that is uh, important and that is a priority for the organization. So uh, another thing that you will be able to do is you'll be able to see the members and it will sort them by rank. I'm the old man, I'm the R5, and then whoever I assign here. The way I'm gonna set this up is everyone who joins is an R1. And if you are smart enough to change your name from the default monarch name to something else, then you'll automatically go up to rank two. And if you do something stupid as an R2, an R3, or an R4, then you will get busted back down to R1 until you can, well, be less stupid. Uh, as a, uh, an R4 and an R5, you are also able to invite people. Now, you can input a player's name. We don't really know anybody, so we can't really put a player's name in there. And then what this is going to do is this is going to pick five random people. I don't know what the criteria are. Apparently the criteria are that you are not in an alliance and that you have not changed your name. So you can see by the low level here, these are relatively new players and I can just blindly shoot an invite out to them. Now, don't let the language dissuade you from inviting someone into your alliance. They may conversate in your chosen language. They may not. Um, they may be able to get through with the translation software. They may not. So this is one way that you can get um, new players in. You know, the other way that you can do that, let's go all the way out here, is you have to find someone who's not in an alliance. And I'll be honest with you, on this world, it's going to be pretty hard to find someone who's not in an alliance. So here is someone who's not in an alliance. So if I click on them, now that I am in an alliance, and I am of a high enough rank, I can click Invite to Alliance. And what that will do is that will send them a message and it will say, you've been invited to this alliance. So when you log on, remember when you log on, you'll see those, there's usually two invitations that you get. My guessing is if you have multiples, it will give you the two most recent. That's just a guess on my part. And, uh, and so that's that's a way that you can do that. Let's go back in here to Alliance. We can also, if we hit the mail, this will says to all Alliance members. So if I write a, a, a mail here, then it will go to everybody in my Alliance. Now, the downside about this, you can't change the subject. I don't know why, but you can't. The other thing that's very irritating is you cannot forward a mail. So uh, when the server king sends a mail out, it goes to all the alliances to the R5 and the R4s. And that's, you know, that's a good way to get a message out. Here's the downside of that. When they get a message, there will be a T down here and you can click on that T and it will translate it from whatever language it was written in, if it was other than your chosen language, into your chosen language, which can be quite, quite useful if you don't speak Russian. And, you know, the server king is, is sending a message out in Russian. Um, the downside of that is I cannot forward that email with that ability to the rest of my alliance. Now I can take a picture of it, I can do a screenshot of it and send it out, but you lose the ability to have that automatically translated. So what we have found is that when the R4s or the R5s get a mail, is they basically have to paraphrase it and say, hey, mail, mail from the king, here's basically what he said. Now, 
if everybody in your alliance speaks the same language, it's a piece of cake. Uh, because then you can send a message out and it doesn't matter because, you know, everybody, everybody reads, you know, Fijian or Samoan or whatever your chosen language is. The other thing that you're not able to do to a, a, as an alliance male, which means to everybody, is you can't attach anything. So you can't attach a photo. Um, you can't take a picture of something and then send it out to everybody. I don't understand the limitation, but that's, that's the way it is. Uh, other things that you can do is you can selectively send stuff out. So if you need to send something out only to your R4s, if you have business for the Alliance and you, you need the information to go out just to your R4s, then you can do that. Or if you only need it to go to the new guys, um, you know, you can send it to them only and you don't spam everybody else's mailbox. So there's, you know, there's a couple of features in there that are okay. There's a couple of features in there that are just, eh, they're just not so good. So as a new alliance, we have a bunch of things. If you've, if you've gone through part one, you're familiar with it. Uh, if you haven't, that we have the ability now to wage an alliance war, which means we can fight a monster in the PvP war tab, or we can fight another player. This That's where it will show up here. If you are doing an event, if you are doing, say, the undead invasion, then everybody who's getting attacked will be under this tab. Uh, that's a nice feature, so you're not necessarily going to get this tab all um, clogged up. The other thing that you're able to do is you're able to go in and look at battle logs. Now, of course, there's nothing here, but if you are running an alliance and you want to know what happened overnight, then this is the first place that you go. I will briefly look over the alliance journal to see if anything happened, if anybody got kicked out. Um, if somebody changed something, um, then I will go into Alliance War. I'll go into the battle logs. And if anyone attacked us or if anyone in our alliance attacked someone else, it will show up here. It won't give us, it won't give us a, a, a battle report like you can generate uh, on your own, but it will say this person attacked or was attacked by this person it'll give xy coordinates for each one so you can go back and you can look and if you're in the middle of a uh you know if you're in the middle of a, a, a server-wide nap you know a ceasefire and you log on you see like eight attacks by one guy during the ceasefire then you get to go to that guy and you get to chew some butt because he is being stupid and he he may not know he may not understand or he may not care and that's where you get to perhaps exercise the boot authority that you have uh, under alliance treasure based on the activity in our alliance there will be there will be gifts that will populate here we don't have any activity, so we can't. We don't have anything to generate right yet. Uh, also, under Alliance Building, if we have the ability, if we are going to start something, that's where this will happen. If we want to raise the banner, if we reach that requirement, let's go to Information, see what it says. R4 and R5 can set the Alliance banner, and then upgrade it to an Alliance City. If they do not upgrade the Alliance banner within 72 hours, it will automatically be removed. So planting a banner and getting it into a city, turned into a level one city, is a timed event. You gotta, you gotta get on it. So it's, it's, it pays 
to be organized before that point. The land around your alliance banner and alliance city is considered alliance territory. What does that really mean? That means if you have to, you can expel somebody from it. You can spend 3,000 gems and you can kick somebody out of your territory, but there's nothing that prevents them from coming back in. If you want to be a little terrorist on the server, that's a fantastic way to do that. Is port right into the middle of somebody's hive and either start stealing their monsters or you could be really mean and you could start spawning Fenrirs and killing them and filling their territory up with boxes. I mean, that's just something I've seen on, you know, the interwebs. Um, the other thing about uh, the Alliance territory is Alliance members within the Alliance territory share the Alliance city buff. Um, what is our Alliance City buff? Uh, well, I don't know. We don't have an Alliance City yet, so it doesn't really matter, does it? What else does this say? Whoops. Cancel, because we're not gonna we're not gonna plant the banner yet, because first of all, we don't have 20 people, and that is something that you have to have in order to make this banner uh, go up. Uh, I believe that's the number. Let's get back in here and see. If it will tell us alliance members can reinforce the banner in the city okay that really doesn't tell us anything you have to finish the building of alliance city within 24 hours otherwise the building process fails you cannot set up alliance banner or alliance city again for an hour if they are removed so if we want to plant our banner we have 24 hours to get enough people to raise this and then we have a set amount of time and I believe you have to have 20 members to reinforce it to get your city going I think that's the case so they don't really give you numbers it's, you have to kind of figure it out for yourself Alliance help this will become very nice when we have two people preferably two active people because then, if I build something, then the hand will come up, I can ask for help, and the other person or persons in the Alliance can help me back. You can find that information under your embassy as far as how much time you will get when somebody hits that. Uh, Alliance Science, we already covered that. Alliance Shop. This is where you can spend your points. Right now I have 5,500 points, but you can see my honor is only 1,700. So let's scroll down here to where we've already talked about the big three are VIP points, the three-day bubble, and tribute. If I wanted to buy tribute, I have to have my honor level at 10,000 as well as having 10,000 alliance points. So there's a little bit of catching up that you have to do from one side to the other, but this is one of the main reasons right here, because if we are able to donate to Alliance Science consistently enough, we can get 15,000 points in a day. And now, in addition to our meager 11.6 VIP points a day we get from logging in, if we are able to catch the 12 o'clock VIP spawn on the wall, that's 12 o'clock Eastern time. That happens at 5 p.m. server time. If you're in a time zone other than mine, you'll have to do that conversion yourself. That's another 100, so now we're up to 111.6 points a day. And if I can buy 100 more, I've doubled the rate nearly at which I can increase my VIP and getting to VIP 5 and gaining that extra March slot is a big big deal if I don't have my gym game figured out yet I can buy 8 hour bubbles or 24 hour bubbles you do the math in fact I would love someone to actually sit down and do the math in order to stay bubbled for a week, which one of these is better 
economy-wise, just from a straight payout perspective versus the convenience. Because, remember, if you put an eight-hour bubble on, it's only good for eight hours. Every eight hours. Then if someone applies for Alliance membership, like right now, we are closed. And if you want in, you would have to hit the Apply button, and I would get a little red dot there. And then I could either say yay or nay. Or I could, I could yawn, because it's nap time, and I could ask them some more questions before I decided to admit them in. And then this, uh, other alliances, you can see other alliances. And again, I, I don't have any idea what the criteria is. You've got them from 490k all the way up to 2.8 billion. So it's, you know, just a pretty varied mix of what's on there. And so that is, that is our Alliance menu. And if we go back here, now when we look, what does this say? It says FNG, Farging New Guys. So that's how you can identify uh, one of our members and you can see they're a different alliance than we are now as an alliance probably one of the most important benefits that we get is we are able to rally a boss now instead of just fighting a boss monster when I go to attack if I want to attack it just like I would normally do then I would click the attack button but now I have an alliance and if I want to rally this boss if I want to bring others along for the ride I can do that I can click on alliance war I can set my rally time and then I can select my uh, I can select what I want to go fight this this beast with now you'll notice I've got an alliance designation at the beginning of my name and then I can bring multiple people along for this ride and my advice to you and again we're we're all big boys and girls here you can do whatever you want on if you want to put a, a you know a purple feather in your hat and you know, identify with the flying spaghetti monster, you can do that. What I would advise you to do is I, if I'm the rally leader, if I'm the rally boss, then I want to be able to beat whatever monster I'm rallying against with zero losses. And then everyone that comes along, I tell them, you send me one general and you send me one cavalry troop, horse troop, mounted troop, whatever you want to call it. Because cavalry is the preferred um, troop type for bosses. And if I can beat this boss by my own everyone who tags along after me if they only send one general and one troop then they are going to get all the monarch experience they are going to get all of the general experience they are going to get all of the reward as if they had beaten that monster themselves and the only thing that they have put at risk is one troop being wounded. You don't lose generals when you fight boss monsters. In fact, when you're fighting a boss monster, what's the worst that can happen? You lose 10% of your troops because that's the way it's written. At the 10% at the wounded mark, that's when the fight ends and someone's declared the loser. So that is my advice to you. Now, I am not going to go and fight this guy because as you can see, this is the 
And this is kind of the new interface. We just had a, a couple of updates lately. And we are now at, what are we at? Uh, 3. Dot, I think we're at 3.86.11. I think we're at 11, but I think I'm, I've only been able to get BlueStacks to, to upload the, the dot 10 update. It'll be in the sermon notes. Um, so you can see this is the, the power of the monster. This is, this is my power as a whole. This is my combat power. And there is a discrepancy between these two. Now, as you learn, as you start to pay attention, you can get away with a discrepancy, a bit of a discrepancy, if your tech is good, if your general is, is, is at a, an acceptable level, if he's wearing an acceptable amount of gear, there can be a, a bit of a discrepancy between this number. N not not huge gobs, especially not at this level. Not with not with us littles at this level. So at our level, you want this number to be really close. And then experience will guide you. Um, but then we can hit the march button. And then we had it set for five minutes. And for five minutes, there's going to be a notice go up. And that notice will say, if you want to join, you got this much amount of time. And then everybody goes along for the ride. That is probably the biggest advantage to being in an alliance. And it doesn't matter if, if you have, um, uh, have made this alliance yourself or if you have joined up uh, another alliance. I personally... I, whoever joins an alliance that I'm in, I have a vested interest in making them as good as they can be within certain limits. I mean, if you're dumb, I just, I, there's not a lot I can do with that. If you're not trainable, there's nothing I can do about that. You know, if you don't, if we tell you not to stick your finger in the outlet and for whatever reason you you don't understand how that's important or you don't care if that's important or you're your own boss and you're going to do what you want to do uh, i can't work with that i can't i can't i can't help you at that point but if you will listen um and you can you know you can communicate like an adult then there's a pretty good chance we're going to have some fun. So I will create some text files. And what those text files are going to do is it'll have a very brief welcome from the R5. And it will say, here are the rules of the road, the rules of engagement. We don't hit tiles. You know, we don't, we're not trash talkers. You know, you can make fun of people and you can poke at people, but, you know, if it's starting starting to sound like, you know, the middle school bathroom at break time, it's probably not the place for you. Um, and then I have a series of text messages or just text, and I will cut and paste and then I will hit mail, and then I will mail to like the individual person when they first join up. Here's how to get gems to buy your bubbles. And then I'll send them another one. Here is how to safely explore a relic without getting burned by someone sneaking in on you. Here is how to XYZ. Whatever you feel is important for them to know, you can just create a regular text file in, you know, Notepad or, or uh, you know, whatever app on your phone or your computer uh, or your, you know, your Kindle that you feel is important to them. And you can cut and paste, make it easy on yourself, spend some time and create something like that up front. And that way, when you get a new person, you can just cut and paste, send an email, and now 
they understand where you're coming from. They know, hey, we hit everything that's unbubbled. That is our rule. If you are not attacking, 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 this is not the place for you. You know, get get that get that up front. And then if if those messages go out to someone and then they go, Oh dude, I don't know. I didn't know we were that this kind of a place. You need to be gracious enough to say, well, you know what? How how about I I'll go ahead and, and, and we'll just cut our losses here. I will expel you and that will allow you to immediately join another alliance. Um, because I know a number of people and we have been in alliances and either I didn't fit or they didn't fit and we're still good friends. It's just that I don't want to farm all the time or I don't want to battle and PVP all the time. And we have understood this and, you know, we, we know that we have our strengths and we parted on good terms because Sadly, there is no shortage of people who get butt hurt on this game for whatever reason. You know, you said it was a beautiful day, and now suddenly they hate you and they trash talk you. It's ridiculous. So, you know, have a have a little maturity, have a little grace, and um you know, if, if someone doesn't fit into your alliance, into your baby that you have created, you know, don't don't be a jerk and say, well, you just need to quit. Now, if they are a jerk, then, you know, maybe that's the time to just let them sit for a while. But that's kind of getting off topic. So anyways, that is kind of the very basics of getting your made from scratch alliance up and going and trust me you can spend a lot of time trying to figure out what you know what is the right tone what is the right name uh, you know my alliance ranks do my alliance ranks how do they make people feel are they going to want to stay here because if you noticed in part one of this series when you get into an alliance and there is a lot going on and there is a lot of activity and people are looking out for you they want you to succeed they want you to grow you will you will grow by leaps and bounds and it will be an amazing time and sometimes you'll get in with a group and you're just like man i don't need to be here these people are just, I mean, who talks about muffins that way? I mean, I thought everybody liked muffins. Muffins is great food as long as you take the top off. Oh no, they're muffin bottom eaters and they have to be, yeah. I hope you found this at least a little um, educational. Um, if nothing else, hopefully it will help you appreciate when you are in a nice smooth running organization there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes in an alliance that unless you are an r4 or an r5 you never know about and you know maybe we'll do another one of these later on um, if fngs uh, picks up and and becomes a little bit bigger organization anyways uh this is the old man gamer network i'm combat carl and if you have any questions just shoot me um you know put them in the comments down beneath the uh, sermon notes you know i check those and and you know if i've got an answer you know I'll, I'll i'll tell you what i know and if i don't maybe i'll i can point you to someone else who's smarter than me that shouldn't be very hard at all anyways you guys stay bubbled have a good one Cheers. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us today. Be sure and tap that thumbs up button if you think we've earned it. And be sure to hit the subscribe button and that little bell to be notified when new content comes out. Be sure to check out these other videos. And I'm Combat Carl for Old Man Gamer Network. You guys be sure to go straight home. No screwing around. <laughs>